The Homes of Mrs. Astor, Part 1, Brownstone. Caroline Webster Schumahorn, also known as Lena, married William Backhouse Astor Jr. in 1853. Caroline married into one of the richest old money families in America, all due to William's grandfather, John Jacob Astor I, who made his money in real estate, fur trapping, and other dealings. Caroline's father-in-law gifted the couple, once they were married, a plot of land where they then built their dream home together. He gifted them a corner lot on 34th Street, which was a neighborhood that was becoming more popular. When building the home, the couple did not plan on doing very much entertaining, knowing that the reigning Mrs. Astor, Caroline's mother-in-law, was alive. So they commissioned their home to be no doubt luxurious, but in a more sensible size. The fashionable exterior of old New York at the time was a solid, non-showy, modest-looking home made of brownstone. Outside, the home contained a small walled garden, a fountain, and beautiful plant life. The garden was shared between William's older brother, John Jacob Astor III, who lived next door. At this point in history, old Knickerbocker society, as it was known, showed off their wealth within the interiors of their home and not on the exterior. It would be another ten years before Gilded Age New York began to see the mansions and chateau-like palaces arise. Early Gilded Age homes were extremely ornate, heavily clattered, and draped with art and sculpture. Their brownstone home contained three reception rooms in the Georgian Louis XVI and Empire styles, a Georgian drawing room, an English Regency dining room, and an oak paneled library. Upstairs, Mr. and Mrs. Astor had their master suites. His had a bathroom, bedroom, dressing room, and a private study, while hers contained a bedroom, bathroom, dressing room, and a boudoir. In their home, they also raised five children. Mrs. Astor maintained a staff of 18 servants as well. In 1855, A.T. Stewart built his home across the street from Mrs. Astor's. What first appeared to be gaudy, inappropriate, and showy soon became the new and opulent look. And Mrs. Astor felt the pressure, deciding to do some renovations and upgrades of her own. She kept the outward facade the same and clung to her knickerbocker roots, but redid many of the interiors in a new and opulent style. The Georgian drawing room was transformed into the fashionable Rococo style. The Regency dining room was transformed into Louis XV style. She kept the library and reception rooms the same along the entrance hall, but created a new addition onto the home, the room where her famous balls would take place. These are original pictures of the ballroom, and you can see that the walls are completely covered in her famous paintings. Mrs. Astor and Mr. McAllister would have claimed that this room could have held 400 people, being the most fashionable and appropriate of New York society. Lena would receive guests while sitting or standing near this chair, now at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. When the room was not in use as a grand ballroom, it doubled as a showy art gallery. Lena Astor became the queen of New York's high society. She set the tone for culture, art, and standards at the time. In 1890, William's brother, John Jacob Astor III, died, leaving the adjoining lot to their only son, William Waldorf Astor, also known as Willie. Willie Astor had grown tired of the impending family feud and watching his aunt outshine his wife in society. So he and his wife left New York and went to England in 1891. With one last spiteful move, he ordered the demolition of his childhood home and in its place put up the Waldorf Hotel, which towered 13 stories tall. As the construction progressed, crowds of workmen, dust, noise, and the streams of tourists left Mrs. Astor very unhappy, just as Willie Waldorf had hoped. Unwilling to live next door to New York's latest sensation and craze, and following the death of her husband, she tore down her house. With the help and influence of her son Jack, they decided to put up a hotel in its place, the Astoria. And soon after, the two hotels merged, 
and became the original Waldorf Astoria. She then moved to 841 Fifth Avenue, where she built a double mansion with her son Jack. While Mrs. Astor occupied the northern residence, Jack occupied the southern half. The Astor's original Fifth Avenue mansion was torn down for the Waldorf Astoria, and the Waldorf Astoria was eventually torn down for the Empire State Building. Be sure to check out part two where we will visit Mrs. Astor's double mansion.